Do you want to buy a house or do you want to continue renting? Everyone thinks buying a house is cheaper than renting, but is it really true? Well, the answer isn't as straightforward as you might think. When most people compare the cost of renting to the cost of buying, they usually think, if I can afford to pay $1,000 a month in rent, then I can afford a $1,000 a month mortgage. But those are two completely different things. You see, when you buy a house, there are a lot of additional costs that you need to consider. These are costs that you don't have to worry about when you're renting. Let's break down Warren Buffett's advice about home ownership and see if buying a house truly makes financial sense or if it's just another financial rabbit hole. So stay with me and follow closely until the end. Michael is a financially responsible person who has saved for years. He is now prepared to transition from renting to home ownership. But before he embarks on this step, it's crucial to explore the true costs of home ownership. Now, the first problem Michael faces is down payment. While some lenders offer low or no down payment options, these mortgages are generally considered riskier, potentially leading to higher interest rates or private mortgage insurance requirements. The 2008 financial crisis serves as a stark reminder of the dangers associated with minimal down payments, as many homeowners lost their properties when housing market values declined. A substantial down payment, typically in the range of 10 to 20 percent, is highly recommended to mitigate risk and build equity more quickly. But that's not the only problem Michael must face. The mortgage interest rate is a huge issue. This represents the cost of borrowing the necessary funds to finance the home purchase. Currently, interest rates are near their highest point in two decades, making it even more expensive to borrow. At a 7% interest rate, a substantial portion of John's monthly payment would be allocated towards interest, not reducing the principal loan amount. The cumulative effect of interest payments over the life of a 30-year mortgage can be massive. And we have some more expenses that must be factored into the equation. Private mortgage insurance, or PMI, is typically required for borrowers with down payments less than 20%. Essentially, PMI acts as an insurance policy that protects the lender if the borrower defaults on their loan. The cost of PMI can vary depending on the loan amount and the loan-to-value ratio, but it can add several hundred dollars to the monthly mortgage payment. But that's not all. Property taxes, which are calculated as a percentage of a home's appraised value, can differ dramatically depending on location. In some regions, property taxes can even exceed the monthly mortgage payment. This revenue funds essential local services such as schools, libraries, and first responders. Potential home buyers should be prepared for variations, ranging from a few thousand dollars in low cost of living states to tens of thousands of dollars for expensive homes in high tax locations. Here's the thing home ownership also comes with the responsibility of protecting your investment. Homeowners insurance helps cover the cost of repairing or replacing a home if it's damaged or destroyed by fire, storm, or other covered events. Similar to property taxes, the cost of homeowners insurance varies depending on location and the specifics of the property. Let's say you want to buy a home in an area that's prone to natural disasters. The risk is palpable and so are the homeowners insurance rates. They're significantly higher than those for homes in safer areas. Across the United States, homeowners insurance typically costs between $150 to $200 per month. But this is merely a starting point. The actual cost can vary dramatically based on the property's location and risk factors. The truth that's barely told is that owning a home comes with the inevitable reality of maintenance and repairs. These can range from minor inconveniences like a leaky faucet to major expenses like replacing an HVAC system or installing a new roof. As a homeowner, it's wise to set aside 1-2% to of your home's value each year to cover these costs. It will help avoid financial stress when these unexpected expenses inevitably rise. Now, let's assume Michael is eyeing a property valued at $500,000. If Michael opts for a fiscally responsible approach and makes a 20% down payment, he'll need to pay $100,000 up front. This leaves him with a mortgage of $400,000. With current interest rates around 7% for a 30-year fixed mortgage, Michael's monthly mortgage payment would be approximately $2,661. Since Michael made a substantial down payment, he's exempt from private mortgage insurance, but he still needs to account for property taxes. 
assuming an annual property tax rate of 1.2% of the home's value, Michael would incur an annual expense of $6,000 or $500 per month. Factoring in homeowner's insurance at around $200 per month, Michael's total monthly housing costs come to $3,361. But the financial implications of home ownership don't stop there. A crucial concept to consider is opportunity cost. This typically refers to the potential benefits that one foregoes when choosing one option over another. In the context of home ownership, the opportunity cost represents the potential return on investment that Michael could have earned if he had invested in his down payment elsewhere, such as the stock market. The potential returns on such investments could range from 30 to 50% annually. Here's the thing, you're not Warren Buffett, but you can still make informed financial decisions by understanding the concept of opportunity cost. You see, the stock market has dramatically outperformed single-family houses in terms of returns in the past. This means that the money used as a down payment on a house could potentially generate high returns if invested in the stock market. Let's go back to Michael's example. Let's say there's a 6% annual opportunity cost on the $100,000 he used as a down payment to purchase the house. This means that Michael is potentially missing out on $6,000 a year or $500 a month in investment returns. When we factor in this opportunity cost, Michael's total monthly cost of owning a home rises to $4,270. This is way higher than his original monthly mortgage payment. Now, let's compare buying a home to renting. But before we do, consider supporting this channel by hitting subscribe button. It really helps us grow. Now here's the thing. When you rent, calculating your monthly cost is straightforward. It's simply the amount of rent you pay each month. In the US, renters typically aren't responsible for property taxes, maintenance, or homeowners insurance. As a result, renting can often be a more affordable option, especially in today's market, where it's currently cheaper to rent than to buy a home. As an example, let's take a look at a neighborhood in Houston, Texas. Homes in this neighborhood are selling for $500,000, which, as we saw earlier, would cost around $4,300 a month to own. These same types of homes can be rented for anywhere from $1,700 to $2,300, literally right down the street. While this is just one neighborhood in one city, this trend is true throughout the country. In fact, there are only four US cities where it is cheaper to buy than to rent. So now that we've established that buying a home isn't necessarily cheaper than renting when factoring all the hidden costs, Let's see why Buffett says buying a house can be a rash investment. Now, let's say Michael lives in his new house for 10 years. After his 10 years of paying monthly mortgage, his loan balance will have been reduced to $343,000. As we calculate Michael's financial return, there's also the nuanced factor of home price appreciation to consider. Over the long term, home prices tend to keep up with inflation, but so do things like repairs, property taxes, and insurance. So, let's say that Michael's home appreciates at an average annual rate of 2%. That means at the end of 10 years, Michael's home will be worth approximately $610,000. But here's what's truly interesting. When Michael goes to sell the house, he will have to pay closing costs and commissions. This typically accounts for about 8% of the home's value meaning Michael's net sales price will be $561,000. Subtracting out the loan balance of $343,000 leaves Michael with cash in his pocket of nearly $218,000. Using his $100,000 down payment as the base, that means Michael's money grew at an average rate of about 8% in the 10 years he owned the house. If we redo the numbers and assume the house appreciated at 1%, Michael's implied return falls to about 5%. Compare that return to what Michael would have had if he instead invested that $100,000 into the stock market. The potential returns could be significantly higher, which further underscores the opportunity cost of choosing to buy a house. Now, let's assume Michael invests an additional $5,000 a year with the money he saved by renting. Assuming the long-term return of the stock market is 10%, at the end of 10 years, Michael's $100,000 would have grown to $339,000.
This works out to an implied annual return of 133% in this scenario. See, Michael would have been better off financially if he had chosen to rent and invest that money in the stock market instead of buying a house. That is precisely what Warren Buffett means when he says that often buying a house is a mediocre financial investment. Because when you buy a house, you are making a highly leveraged bet on home price appreciation. In other words, you are using a lot of debt to buy a house in the hopes that home prices will keep rising. If you put a 10% down payment and home prices rise 10%, you can double your money. But with that same 10% down payment, if home value falls 10%, you lose 100% of your money. Without the effects of leverage, the financial returns from buying a house would look even more mediocre. These numbers we just discussed help explain why even wealthy Americans are choosing to rent instead of buy. Now, we have spent this discussion talking about the financial returns from buying a house, but as Buffett mentioned, there are countless non-financial reasons to buy a home. Many people derive immeasurable intangible value from owning their home. Even though Buffett considers the purchase of his own house a lousy financial investment, he has said on numerous occasions it was some of the best money he has ever spent, not because of the returns it generated, but because of the memories it preserved. So, whether you're like Michael, ready to make a down payment on a house, or you're still weighing your options, understand the true cost of home ownership can help you make an informed decision that aligns with your financial goals and lifestyle preferences. Remember, the best decision is the one that makes the most sense for you, given your unique circumstances and goals. Let us know what you think in the comment section. Would you buy a house or continue renting? If you found this video valuable, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.